Update. My 26 female best friend, 23 female, might be in love with my husband, 26 male. Where do I go from here? Original post. My husband and I have been together since we were young teenagers. We got married last year and have a six-month-old daughter together. She is the light of both our lives, as we both came from broken homes and want a better life than we lived growing up. My best friend came a few years later. We used to live in the same neighborhood and casually began to hang out. She lives with both her parents and siblings as she is studying to get her bachelor's degree. At first, she didn't like my husband. Said that he was clingy and tried to insert himself into our friendship. She was civil to him though because she was my romantic partner. For context, my husband is bipolar type 2, autistic and has PTSD. And it causes him to be a little socially awkward and miss certain social cues and taboos. I love him regardless of it all. Over the last few years, we have been hanging out a lot more. She comes over for a few drinks, we go to movies, and even visit local attractions together. We all three have a good time, and my husband does try to make nights for just the two of us often too. However, last year, my husband and I found out we were expecting a child together in January. I was working and fell ill because at the time I was working at a fast food place. I threw up and went to the doctor. Come to find out, I was eight and a half weeks pregnant. My life changed, and I had become busier to get myself ready for motherhood. My best friend saw me less and less, and we couldn't talk as much. My husband and I got married almost a month and a half after discovering we were going to become parents. That's when our dynamic changed. Recently, I applied to school and I'm currently in college trying to get a law degree so I can become a paralegal and get to law school. I'm also a stay-at-home mom while doing college too. I've been super busy. One day, my husband gets a text and it's from my best friend. She asks if they can talk as she was upset. He took the phone call with me protesting and a few minutes later said, Sandra, we need to go get Carla. Her father is picking a fight with her. I get upset as we were watching a movie together and I had just gotten the baby down for bed. But we go to her house, which is about 20 minutes away and she stays with us for a night. As I get our daughter back down to bed, Carla asks to cuddle with the two of us in our bed. I was hesitant. I have issues with the claustrophobia due to a traumatic experience as a child. My husband gave the go-ahead. We settle in for the night. Carla's dad apologized and she heads back home. Once she was gone, I blew up on my husband. What he did was not only inappropriate, but was disrespectful to my boundaries. Ever since, when she has an issue with her dad, she calls my husband and vents. One day, while my in-laws were staying with us, my mother-in-law overheard a convo with my hubby and Carla. She was concerned and asked me if I was okay with it. I said, no, not really, but every time I bring it up, he gets defensive, saying that she needs help, that she's going through a hard time, blah, blah, blah. It is important to note that my mother-in-law was cheated on in the past by her ex, my husband's father. We are also extremely close and she sees me as a daughter. She hates cheaters with a passion. And my husband, who I will refer to as James, was using the same excuses his father did. She asked to speak to him privately and walked to our living room. They got into a heated match and James apologized to me. He said he didn't know that it was hurting me and causing issues in our marriage. I asked him, how would you feel if I had asked him if another man could sleep in the bed with us? He kind of deflated and tried to say, it's different, blah, blah, blah. His stepfather, Mark, spoke up and said, it's the same. You're uncomfortable with it. So is she. Quit with excuses. James respects Mark quite a lot, actually. Mark raised him since he was eight and his own father was in and out of the picture. Once the dust settles, my husband truly apologized to me for his actions and said that he would do better. I kissed him and that was that. However, I wouldn't be here if that was the end of the issues. Lately, Carla has been calling him three to eight times a day. She says it's because she's bored and has no one to talk to. I snap. I call him out over the nonchalance about the situation. How when she calls, he answers. How it is making me feel like a third wheel in my marriage, etc. His response? She's just lonely. You're letting it get to you. That night, I slept in the living room. I'm starting to suspect that she is trying to monopolize his time. She calls him for over an hour each time. He calls, they talk, she complains about her life, etc. Almost like she's his girlfriend or something. I'm starting to find this relationship troubling. It is getting to the point that it is affecting my marriage. Where do I go from here? Any advice would be appreciated. Now for the top advice before reading the update. 
You've set your boundaries and he continues to cross them. Is this how you want your marriage to be? She won't stop as long as your husband responds to her every time. You're right. I have issues standing up for myself. You are standing up for yourself. Your husband is not respecting you. You need to be open with your husband and tell him that his behavior is leading to the end of this relationship. If it tries the, she's lonely and you're just jealous, you answer that she's lonely because she preferred to seek the attention of her best friend's husband. And you are jealous because he's given more importance to another woman's comfort over yours, his wife and mother of his child. Him being autistic is not an excuse here. He has difficulty with social clues, not with knowing what is right or wrong. It's not unknown to a person in a committed relationship to develop a crush on someone. What they do about that crush is what matters. Your husband, instead of cutting her off his life and putting effort into the marriage, is letting his feelings for her grow and become an emotional affair. So I'm with you on her probably having feelings for him. But let's be honest here. Your husband is at the very least having an emotional affair with that woman. Bipolar, autism, PTSD. Don't excuse the fact that he was cool with another woman sleeping in your marital bed. This was weird as heck, and I still don't understand how he just didn't say no. Your husband is choosing to answer her phone calls. He's the one affecting your marriage with his awful behavior. Your mother-in-law saw it. Her husband saw it. Anybody with some sense can see it. I think he can see it and that he likes the attention he's getting from her, and he likes that you're jealous, which you are not being, of his new friendship. If I were you, I'd sit down with him and I'd be clear about how inappropriate him answering her 3 to 8 calls a day when he has a wife and a child. That they can be friends, but that she's taking way too much space into our lives. That if he does not limit his interactions with her and keeps making her a priority, you will be moving out with your kid. That you want couples counseling, and that if he does not agree, then he can find himself a divorce attorney. Again, she's an issue, but she's not your issue. Your husband is. Edit. Thanks everyone for the feedback. I'm going to have a talk with him, with his mom involved. He won't listen to me if I don't. I'm tired of fighting him over this. I should have an update with a resolution in a couple days. I'm going to read everyone's responses more thoroughly. Thanks for the advice. Edit number two. My husband and I had a sit-down talk. His mother and stepfather weren't available. He promised me that he would explain everything in detail. I called Carla and she said that we could talk Friday when she wasn't busy with school. She had something she needed to air out. I will have an update on Friday, hopefully. Edit number three. I woke up to a text from Carla this morning. She actually wants to talk to me tonight, alone, as her schedule has changed. We are going to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Hopefully, I will have some news. Now for the full update. This update is hard. Everything about this situation sucks, and I don't know if I will be okay for some time. Baby and I are currently staying with my friend Tanya. To start, James and I are getting a divorce. Carla is no longer a friend to me or our mutuals. The betrayal is too deep for her to be friends with our group. As most of you assumed, James and Carla are indeed having an affair. It started about three months ago and just turned physical one month ago. They were planning on just up and leave after James served me divorce papers. They used a ruse that he was helping her through emotional issues to hide a fact. I was crushed. She wanted to clear the air before it got worse. That was when she dropped a huge bombshell. James was going to try and get me to terminate my rights to my child in order for Carla to adopt her. The reason? My borderline diagnosis a few years ago made me unfit to be a mother, and he was sure that the courts would agree. She then handed me two separate stacks of paperwork and left. I am contacting a lawyer as I am writing this. I was seriously hurt. You guys were right. Carla was a snake. And only told me this so she wouldn't feel guilty. However, I am not letting my soon-to-be ex-husband bully me into termination of my rights. I called him afterwards and got very heated about what was going on. James just sat there in silence. I was crying afterwards. I pleaded with him to tell me what I did wrong. For a little bit of backstory, I had a near-fatal complication with my delivery of our daughter where I bled my entire labor. I had to have two blood transfusions and haven't fully recovered from it. I was not cleared for any strenuous activity for three months, including sexual activity. James was getting unsatisfied with all of my doctor's appointments and not getting the action he wanted. I was hurting and ended up needing another procedure to remove some placenta that didn't naturally come out. 
I had to have my tubes tied, because if I have another child, it will kill me next time. James wanted at least two more kids, and this put an end to his plans. I married a monster. We were together since we were 15, and this is how he repays me? I thought I knew him. He was acting so caring and nice to me. I am absolutely heartbroken. I'm not even sure if I'm going to update this anymore, but if I do, it'll be after the divorce settles. Thanks for all your concern. I'm going to step back and take some time to adjust. There is no chance for a healthy co-parenting situation. I'm fighting for primary custody with supervised visits. Carla will not have any access to baby, as I will ask the judge to make a clause preventing her from interacting with my daughter. Thanks for all the advice. I contacted his mother and Mark this morning. They are furious that James is doing this to me. They are helping me foot the cost of a lawyer because I'm a stay-at-home mom and college student. They have kicked James out and is now staying at our old house with Carla. He did give me the courtesy to get my stuff and didn't put up a fuss about me taking what I wanted. He told me that he will keep in contact for divorce proceedings. Why did you leave? He's the a-hole. He's the one that gets to leave. It's his house. Inheritance. He only let me stay as a courtesy. We have only been married for a year. The house was his before marriage. Even still, inheritance laws where I'm from are a thing. So even if he got it while married, it's still his. His parents didn't know the full story, but now that they do, he overstayed his welcome. They are so angry. I'm not sure if his relationship with his mom or stepdad are salvageable. I'm so sorry. I hope for the best and brightest future ahead of you, as well as an excellent lawyer. May your soon-to-be ex and his dream snake be dumb enough to answer the door when karma comes knocking. A joke of a man. They deserve each other and will be punished accordingly. Karma doesn't miss in this kind of circumstance. Now Carla will deal with that monster. Lol, she thinks she won. Someone said this on a reality love TV show. You didn't take my man, you took away my problems. Last story. 27 female accused of baby trapping my 28 female fiancé when my tubes are tied. I had an argument with my fiancé this morning. We've been dating for two years, engaged since September, and for the most part, everything has been going well. We've been planning a quiet backyard ceremony so that we can save up for a house instead. We've been communicative and managed to get through fights in the past, but this takes the cake. He's been evasive for the past two weeks about the wedding or any future plans we've made, and I basically had to corner him this morning before leaving for work to ask him what was going on. Turns out, while he was dog-sitting for his uncle early in February, they had a chat that stuck with him. When they were talking about life and how things have been, his uncle admitted he resented his ex-wife for baby-trapping him. And now he's divorced while his ex-wife is dating again. And my fiancé's cousin is an entitled A-hat to terrorize him when they were both teenagers. Turns out it's been sitting in his mind. He says that he thinks I'm about to spring a pregnancy announcement on him and trap him into marriage. This is despite the fact that he knows that I don't want kids. I basically raised my siblings and lost out in my childhood. I told him about not wanting kids when we first started dating. We were both on the same page, and I've even asked him about getting a vasectomy in the past. Which is why it's surprising that he thinks that I'm trying to baby trap him. Thing is, the first chance I got, which still took a long time, I got my tubes tied. I literally can't get pregnant. I reminded him of this fact, and that made him go really quiet. He didn't even apologize or say anything. So I told him that if he's going to be like this over a made-up issue in his head, I don't know how much I'd trust him in a real crisis. Now I'm wondering if I was too harsh, and what steps can we take to move forward? Or if I'm the right amount of angry and I should just end it? I have no idea what to do right now. Now for the top advice. He says that he thinks I'm about to spring a pregnancy announcement on him and trap him into marriage. I'm confused. You stated that this man intends on marrying you, right? You're engaged? Baby trapping is when someone intentionally gets pregnant using methods like deception to keep their partner from leaving the relationship. Does he actually intend on marrying you? I literally can't get pregnant. I reminded him of this fact, and that made him go really quiet. He didn't even apologize or say anything. I would demand a response from him. His words and behavior are a red flag. I would postpone the wedding until the relationship is in a better place. Maybe this needs to be addressed with a counselor. The only reason I didn't drag a response from him is that I would have been late for work and I have a meeting I couldn't miss. 
but if he doesn't have a response when I get home, I'm definitely going to call off the wedding, if not the relationship. And do not lie to cover up for him. When people ask, tell them. We were just about to get married, and he talked to his uncle that convinced him you were going to baby trap him. Despite him knowing you've gotten a tuba ligation and despite the fact that he was already marrying you. His behavior threw up too many red flags, and you no longer feel comfortable marrying him. His uncle sounds like a real winner. Why is he afraid of getting trapped into marriage when he's literally planning a wedding with you? Like, huh? Marriage also isn't a trap. Anyone can leave at any time, regardless of whether there's kids. And the fact that he forgot your tubes were tied. Is he dumb? You sound the right amount of angry to me. Personally, I'd be hesitant to marry someone who was so easily swayed by his unreasonable uncle that you're somehow trying to trick him into a life of misery. On top of that, he's been dwelling on this for two weeks and never once communicated what was going on with him. He just completely checked out until you forced it out of him. I'm not sure I'd want to marry anyone who A. thinks marriage is a trap for men and B. let his uncle convince him you're just like his ex-wife in one conversation. C. can't communicate or apologize. D. surrounds himself with such crappy male role models. And E. doesn't understand how tied tubes work. I think this is exactly my problem. I don't know if it thinks I deliberately ruin my life to just mess it up, or I've been lying since I met him. I don't want to make a knee-jerk decision, but I'm seriously reconsidering this relationship. I'd be reconsidering the relationship as well. Are you really sure that you want to be with this man when he, despite you having your tubes tied, questions your intentions at this level? I mean, he knows. So why is this a problem now? I don't think your fiancé wants to get married. It's not just a conversation with the uncle. For whatever reason, he's feeling trapped and uses this as an excuse. You need to have a serious talk with him and be open and curious so you get some genuine answers. You are absolutely the right level of angry. I would be feeling extremely distressed, hurt, and confused. Your fiancé didn't communicate there was an issue and he is disrespecting you. I would really reconsider whether I wanted to marry someone who has this mindset. Hence the conversation so you can get the root cause. Take care.